right, hello everyone, and welcome to the sixth session of Star Trek Dark Royal. For those who don't know, Star Trek Dark Royal is a tabletop role-playing game using the Star Trek Adventures rule set. It is set aboard an alien vessel that isn't a part of Starfleet and thus plays by different rules. We are in the same canon as McCall's Nighthawk and Cerberus games, and as part of a sort of a mini announcement, uh, this coming Friday, the Dark Royal crew and Cerberus Station will be having a crossover game, so definitely encourage you to check that out if that's right up your alley. Uh, that should be at 9 p.m. on McCall's channel. Um, but uh, really where I'm going with this is if you want to catch the VODs for Dark Royal or any other of my games, you should be able to catch them on YouTube and other podcast solutions. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and run the main intro. And welcome back. So if you are new or you don't remember, uh, what I like to do for all my Star Trek games is have one of the players do a captain's log or an opening log of some sort. <clears throat> and tonight, I believe Soup, a.k.a. Kragith, has that for us. <clears throat> Master at Arms report. Imperial date 0148406.m03. Current status. We've returned from our away mission and returned to the Dark Royal, though some of the crew has elected to remain on the Dark Royal A for the time being. Currently, we are en route to a moon with large de deposits of dilithium to repair the Dark Royal A to make it spacefaring once more. The captain has, in his in wisdom, elected to remain behind with Hiev to continue observations of the Dark Royal A, as well as direct repairs that can be done without the dilithium. That being said, I, Master, Cr Master at Arms Kragath, have been chosen to be the current acting captain on the Dark Royal. While I am a soldier and not a captain, I cannot refuse a direct order from, the cap from Captain Dominus, and I have resigned myself to this fate. At the current time of this report, we are rapidly approaching the moon in question. I expected and expect to extract this dilithium rather smoothly. While it may not be professional for myself to state, I cannot shake the feeling that something will go wrong on this mission. May the blood god keep us in his favor, and may he accept the sacrifice of ours of the skulls. Master Arms Kragath and Log. Very well. So today's first scene is actually going to be in main engineering, where Zazadar and a supporting character, uh, Zek Lin, are having a conversation about how best to mine the dilithium. And Zek Lin will be played by Shizno today, so I'm gonna let uh, or I'm gonna let you two just go at it. We just exploded. Best way to get at all the good stuff. Get rid of the top layer junk. Just explode it. So dig a big hole. Well, not even that. We just shoot a rail around at it. This ship likes the railgun a lot. I think we all do. It is nice. But will that force damage the dilithium? Oh, more than likely. But 
it's going to open up more for us to see. Hopefully. Potentially. It could also cause a cascading reaction and <laughs> poof. Everything in a, uh, what is it, a couple light years is just gone. Will the a blade of armor and polarized hull plating be enough to protect the ship in that case? <laughs> no. No, definitely not. So has our Starfleet scientist run the numbers on this? Good question. Out of character. Is our Starfleet scientist with us, or is she on the Dark Row A? No, she should be with you guys. Right. And uh, Zach will just go to console and poke it for a couple of seconds. Uh, hey, Starfleet. I'm not Starfleet as a whole, but okay. We're gonna attempt a um, what was it? A ground? No, no, air, air to ground surface detonation on that moon for the Dilithium. Uh, what are the odds that we just, you know, blow up that whole entire planetoid? Her eyebrows are just raised up right now. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to what? Um, can I make a roll or fi figure out if it's going to actually explode this? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a very important roll. Why don't you roll me a reason science? And the Dark Royal will assist with a Sensor's Science. And uh, difficulty on this will be a 2. Would this be a Sensor's thing? It most definitely would be. Anybody else have the ship up? Yeah, you can get it. Yes. Alright, on the way. Alright, total of 3 successes, which means you get 1 momentum. And uh, as per usual, or at least what I'm trying to make usual... Uh, you should now have access to a handout called Dilithium Moon Handout. Ooh. And that is what is going on with the, uh, the moon at the current juncture. And I'll let you extrapolate what that means. Hmm. Uh, I don't think shooting anything at it would be a good idea. Uh, um, the crystals in this moon. Oh gosh, I'm trying to do this real fast. Okay. The crystals are forming a generative strata, so uh, they can radiate heat and it converts it into mechanical energy. So if you shoot anything at this, it, it can... I vote against it. Well, so much of that idea. Is there anything we could shoot at it? Less velocity? Anything to puncture to give us easier access? There, uh, it's energy that's building up, so it's it would affect the tectonic plates in this pl in, in in the moon or if you can say it's tectonic plates but um, it will create tectonic stresses in the crust so anything going beyond a certain point wouldn't be good is there areas where the dilithium is more easily accessible Out of Can character. I scan to see? Yeah. I was going to say, out of character, why don't we do a roll for that? Uh, this time, roll me a insight science, a difficulty of one. Ship assist as well? Nope, just, uh, just her. 
and she gets two successes, so another yeah. momentum. There are some deposits of dilithium that are closer to the surface, but as you've been alluding to, if you're not careful when you go to mine, you could very well cause a chain reaction which causes the moon to blow itself up. There are some surface deposits, but if we aren't careful with the mining, yeah, I'm, I'm going to relay that information over to them. Okay. I guess if getting dilithium was easy, everybody could do it. Correct. Hmm. Yeah, about five years ago, I wouldn't have this issue. We just find a ship, attack it, and take that to lithium. I mean, if there's a way for us to collect it after it explodes, then okay. But it might just destroy all of it. Uh, let's see. So, the lithium is making a lattice? Correct. Is what you said? Hmm. <sighs> We could make. Now we don't have that on this ship. We could. We could use a probe. Um, try to offset the lattice and make it shatter without detonating. If you controlled landed. The probe, maybe the battle tank, hard where it skidded into the surface and dug a trench. Could do that too. We're going to have to fabricate this generator though. It would help maybe with something. the surface. I. Maybe something with a big spike on the end of it to drag into the ground as it flew at a high speed across. I don't know. I'm an engineer. I fix things. And I blow stuff up. Same here. Low density charges? You can do that. Uh, how much dilithium do we need? It's for a warp core, right? Out of character, yes. The answer is it's just for a warp core. What if we told the Master at Arms that there was cats underneath the surface and he could punch through to get to them? I think he'd launch himself out of the rail gun. <laughs> Hmm. Mm. Speaking of Master at Arms, it's about now that, uh, Kragith, you're coming into your eggheads to see the current status of the plan. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. <clears throat> Med. What have you determined? Well... Depending on the amount we need, we can take the tank down. Or we can attempt to destabilize the dilithium crystal lattice with a uh, vibrating, oscillating probe. But we don't have that here. We'd have to make it from scratch. Understood. Uh, out of out of character, would I have information on how much we need to actually bring back? Yeah, I mean, it. you're looking at maybe a couple kilos. So it's honestly not a whole lot. It's just that usually when you mine dilithium, it's in low quantities. So you have to mine a lot of rock to get the required density that you're after. So would we need to actually make the probe or not? That is something think. you would have to determine once you are at the moon. Hmm. Uh, who, who's at the helm? 
uh, right random red shirt at the moment since he have is uh, with the captain. I open up cons with the random red shirt. Estimate time on arrival to the moon. Uh, we will be there in approximately five minutes, sir. Acknowledged. I cut the comms and I look at both of them. What do you need to build your probe? Time and uh, skill. Skill we have. So and you gonna, do have time. Yeah. So we're going to cut ahead just a little bit with Kragith emerging onto the bridge just as the Dark Royal drops out of warp and appearing on the main view screen is what appears to be a dark rock with these purple lines that sort of go throughout it in haphazard fashion. Yes, if you're paying attention, that is the Dilithium Moon from Star Trek Armada. Anyways, uh, what you're noticing, though, isn't so much the moon itself as what appears to be a trio of creatures that are floating around it. Uh, these creatures resemble uh, sort of a nautilus. So if you'll imagine a spiral shell and coming out of the shell is a kraken-like uh, entity has a big uh, beaked head, very large eyes, uh, multiple tentacles, and uh, it's just sort of, the, the three of them are just sort of circling the planet. Or the moon, I should say. It doesn't really seem to have care that you're there. Um, if I had to qualify size-wise, these are maybe about uh, scale two. So they're, they're fairly large. Oh, I have a handout for this. That's more or less what they look like. Oh, neat. Okay, there we are. It took 10 seconds for it to load up on my end. Uh, I look at uh, Koras and State and State slash ask, what are those? I would like to scan these and see if I can... <laughs> figure out what the heck these are if these are in an index that we potentially have. yeah roll me a uh let's do a reason medicine uh difficulty of one one success these are entirely brand new species neither the dark royals banks nor starfleet's data banks have any record of a creature such as this This creature is unknown, as far as I can tell. I wasn't able to find it in either Starfleet or uh, Dark Royals information bank. How big is this thing exactly? Uh, the creature, uh, about the size of a runabout, like a Danube class runabout. So mechanically a scale two. Um, is there any more information that um, I should look for? Well, you are science officer, so you do get a free question. <laughs> I would suggest asking: Are they drawing? Are they drawing dilithium energy from the moon? Such as, are they trying to eat it? Uh, are they trying to eat the energy from the moon? They are indeed. Oh. Uh, in fact, you're noticing that every once in a while, one will dip in closer to the surface of the moon. And using its tentacles and beak, will dig out some rock, uh, put it in its beak, chew it up, and then resume circling the planet again. They are consuming our dilithium. Is there a way to tell if they're sentient? Uh, not really, unless you try to do communication with them. I mean, you could try laser, you could try hailing them, um, but short of actually opening a dialogue and seeing if they respond, it's not like something a sensor would pick up. Mm. 
Uh, how close are they to the dilithium moon? They are within more or less arm's reach. They're, they're very low to the surface. They're maybe at most maybe a click uh, above the surface. So I can't shoot them safely. All right. I mean, you could certainly I try. I do not trust the dice. Goras. Yes, sir. What would be a possible way of either creating a distraction or simply removing these creatures from the moon? Um, is there a way to scan for any potential weaknesses? If um, you give me one momentum, I will answer that question. Y'all okay with that? I'm okay with that. Alrighty. So their uh, their shells, or at least their back half of them, are more armored than the front. The front is probably rather vulnerable to energy weapons. Uh, the back is rather tough. Uh, you'd probably have to use your railgun on that. So weakness-wise, maybe shoot it with a disruptor bank on uh, on the front half and hope that it withdraws into its shell. We shall keep that. In, we will keep that in mind in case we are forced to engage. When, when, we will attempt to contact it first. If it proves to be mindless, then we will resort to Plan B. Yes, sir. So I'm assuming you open a yes. channel? Uh, open a channel to try and see if they're sentient in any way. Okay. Random red shirt reports that the channel is open, just waiting for you to say whatever. <clears throat> Hail, creatures. My name is Master at Arms Krugeth. I am contacting you in order to open dialogue between our two species. Respond if you are able. Random redshirt says, Sir, I'm getting a reply, but it's not from the creatures. It's from a powered down craft approximately uh, about an AU away. What does it say? I can put it on screen, sir, unless you'd prefer to take it in a ready room. Put it on screen. All right. So appearing on screen is a frog-like creature uh, it is humanoid but if you'll imagine a big old frog head uh maybe uh if you're familiar with DD, there's a creature called a slotty uh if you're not it's basically a frog that walks on two legs uh, a little slots. bit more yeah a little bit more uh a little bit more scaly than a normal frog um but this one in particular is uh forest green with orange stripes and uh, the creature says, What are y'all doing here? Th this is my establishment. Establishment? Yes, it's feeding grounds for my creatures. Your creatures consume dilithium. Yeah, feisty little buggers, aren't they? We require dilithium to repair one of our ships. Oh, how much you need? Uh, I calculate up the total. I think it, we'd have... You said we had that written down somewhere, right? Yeah. You send it to him, and he's like, Ah, now see, we have a problem here. I could give you what you're after, and I'd love to help you, but uh, this feeding ground's getting a little slim, if you get my drift. It's uh, likely to uh, break apart at any minute. We surmised as such. I look at Chorus and I state openly, Chorus, do you have any other locations of dilithium within the area? I'm going to go ahead and scan the area. That's it's a big old negative. Um, seems like this is the only one, sir. I 
I gotta think, cause I, do I want to start a fight? <laughs> because if I start a fight, he may try to uh, just blow the moon. So that's a uh, neither of us get it. Now, uh, this is out of character. Uh, when dilithium blows up, well, maybe this should be in character, but um, is it this chain reaction that happens and just all of it's it's one of those things where uh, dilithium does violently explode if subjected to certain conditions. Um, if I remember correctly, that's why Praxis, the Klingon moon, blew up. I think. It's been a while since I've uh, watched that movie. but You are correct. Yeah, basically, if you're not familiar with Praxis, it was a dilithium moon that the Klingons owned. And it exploded so violently that it nearly took out an Excelsior class far far away from it oh wow uh yeah let's not blow this thing up <laughs> hmm. well i'll tell you mm -hmm. what if uh you want to try and get some dilithium you're more than welcome to however i'd recommend uh you seem to have a fancy ship there. Why don't you uh, try stabilizing the moon? Stabilizing the moon? Yeah, I've... Uh... Chorus, would that be possible with our current technology? Is it possible with our current technology? It is indeed. Uh, why don't you roll me a insight and science difficulty of one? Would I have a focus? Let's take a gander at your sheet and find out. Um, uh, yeah, you'd have a focus. Okay, would that be with sensors? Uh, no, it would be with chemistry, oddly enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> would the ship be able to participate as well? Um, not for this role, um, okay. but she's still got three successes, so that's two momentum. And Karos, uh, what you realize is that there are several ways to stabilize dilithium. It's not like a super unstable thing, but it's good to have ways to stabilize it. Uh, the first is that you can introduce some uh, quote-unquote exotic particles to the mix. And these exotic particles, literally imagine them as you know whatever actual name you want to give them. Um, but the point I'm making is you would basically form a particle stream out of your deflector and you'd hit the moon with it and it, it would work out that way. Or you could modulate your tractor beam in such a way that it provides some structural integrity to the moon while you mine it. I'll go ahead and give that information to Kragith. I then fire the information down to the eggheads down below and ask them for their statistical like ask them for statistical chance of which one would be more probable to work as an engineer i like the tractor beam would we consider that the most probable one to work No, the particles, would that be a chemistry? Yeah, I I try to find it in my notes because I know there's a very specific uh, thing on memory alpha. Um, I believe the specific particle is... Ah, what I'm thinking of actually isn't a particle. It is called a theta matrix compositor. And this more or less uh, recrystallizes dilithium, which is what you want to do. Um, so you could make such a compositor fire out of your deflector is what that is. So it's still chemistry. It's just you're bombarding it with a certain sort of energy rather than an actual like particle. Got it. 
All right. This might be an engineering task. Yeah, I think this would be. He got really quiet on me, uh, Chorus. What did you say? Oh, sorry. I, I think this might be an engineering task. Yes. Uh, I I look at the man on the screen, the slot man, mm -hmm. and state, "We will attempt to stabilize the moon, but we cannot promise we will be fully successful." Well, just be careful there. We don't want the uh, whole moon blowing up there. You'd kill my creatures, as well as yourselves, probably. Indeed. So, I immediately send down the orders to the engineering to, well, use the crystallizer to fix up the dilithium, because that would be most like, that would be the thing that helps the moon, correct? Mm-hmm. So I have to send down the orders for them to start working on that immediately. And I look at Koras and ask, is there anything else that you can tell me about the moon before we begin? Is there... I think I already asked for any weak spots mm -hmm. on the moon, right? Yeah. I was more asking, like, what is our time frame? Uh, time frame? As in, like, how long we can drill into it or stabilize? Yeah, how long How long does it have left to how long do, will it take for us to stabilize? Okay. Uh, is there a way for me to go ahead and, like, I don't, I don't know if it's scan or at least run diagnostics on it? Yeah. I would say that uh, you have anywhere between uh, six hours and a week before it will break apart. Alrighty then. Seems like we have some time at least. So you said six hours to a week. Mm-hmm. So, so I sent down to the engineering crew, you have five hours. Alrighty. So, engineering folks, we're going to do an extended task here. Uh, this is going to be a work track of 12, a magnitude of 4, a default difficulty of 4, a resistance of 1, and the task on this is going to be a control and engineering and the ship will assist you with a weapons and engineering All right and focuses only two i have that would be close would be power distribution systems or warp field dynamics I would say the power distribution would be relevant here, if only because if you're not careful, you could put too much power in, which would more or less cause a chain reaction you don't want. For me, it's energy restoration, emergency repair, or fabrication. Um, I guess energy restoration could technically apply. Okay. Uh, I got a 14 between uh, control and engineering. I have 15. Okay, so then you lead, I'll assist. Alright. And I'll use one of those momentums. There you go. Oh, boy. All right, well, that's uh, three successes with the complication. Uh, let's go ahead and get the ship rolling. Reminder, that is a weapons engineering from the ship. All right, coming up. All right, so you have four successes on the board with a complication. Now, I can either have that complication take effect, or you can give me the two momentum and get rid of it. Uh... Because the moon could explode, I'd say let's give him the two momentum. I agree. All right. Make it so. So, Zazadar, you're now going to roll me a total of seven challenge dice. All 
All right, so that is four work done at the moment, which means that you do four on the work track, but it is not enough for a breakthrough, unfortunately. Can he spend a momentum to reroll those zeros? Uh, you are out of momentum by my count. Uh, so we had two to start with, and mm -hmm. then we had the successes. So what was the difficulty again? Was it a four? Yeah, it was, it was a four. four. Okay. I mean, you could give me thread. Could give him thread. Ooh. It's just one um, thread. I do have cautious engineering. I did spend momentum. To oh, buy yeah, one. then you can reroll. I'm going to reroll that one. Okay. That's Very nice. another success. Yeah, in fact, that's another two successes. So, yes, you now have oh, two momentum. That's right. Actually, four momentum. Yeah, because you didn't have to buy off the complication. Yep, so you're at four momentum. Check. And I'll use one of those to re-roll the zeros. Okay. Uh -huh. Very nice. So that is a total of nine work done minus one. Uh, so that's only eight work done, but that's still a significant amount because not only is that a breakthrough, but you are able, uh, by basically channeling your Theta Matrix compositor out of the deflector, uh, a orange-hued beam, not unlike a phaser, but definitely not a phaser, uh, lances out from the forward section of the Dark Royal and impacts uh, the Dilithium Moon. And uh, Kuros on the bridge are beginning to see that the Dilithium is crystallizing uh, in such a way that it is getting rid of the lattices that have been forming. So you've definitely bought yourself some time. However, I am going to spend two threat here to make the complication that the beam is upsetting the beasts. And by that I mean they are beginning to head in your direction. And uh, your frog friend says over the comms, Now see what you did there. You gone upset my creatures. I told you. I warned you. Is there a way that I, he could pull them back? Have you tried I look at the man. I look at the frog and state, call your creatures off. I mean, stabilizing I... stabilizing the moon as you asked. Well, trust me, I, I, I can certainly try, but I make no guarantees. These creatures are uh, very flighty creatures. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll uh, 2d20 <laughs> here. Oh, dear. So, uh... Oh, no. Bit of, bit of bad news there. It seems my uh, gamma beacon isn't exactly working. They, uh, they're they rather annoyed at you. Usually they respond to the beacon. That is unfortunate for the beasts. Very unfortunate. So you've got maybe about a minute before the creatures are within uh, grappling range of the hull. I'm going to try and think, is there a way we can do this without murdering this guy's animals? <laughs> you said they are flighty creatures, correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Do they understand fear? I mean, I would recommend maybe not shooting them. I might have to charge you for damages. I wasn't going to shoot them. Well, what else are you going to shoot? <laughs> well, near them. So if I understand your plan correctly, you are going to fire the uh, Dark Royals disruptors? I'm not going to aim at them. I'm going to aim around them. Okay. So they get... So it's a warning shot. Just so you know, if you roll a complication here, you're hitting one of the creatures. do it and <laughs> I'm a dick I'm, I'm gonna spend some threat to make the complication range of 17 to 20 and oh. I'm going to be smart and I'm going to spend one momentum because I have cautious security very nice all right so uh, it's gonna be a uh, control security from Kragath and the dark royal will assist you with a weapon security uh, difficulty of two here. Hey, guys, you've been rolling pretty well. Do you want to roll the ship? 
all right. You've been doing pretty good. <laughs> well, that's a three. Fair enough. Yeah, there's a karma pendulum, though. <laughs> this, this is still the Dark Royal. Right? Yeah. Okay, uh, what, the, what am I rolling for the ship? Weapon security. And does the ship have a focus? Always has a focus. Always has a focus, okay. And that is indeed a complication. No! And <laughs> the problem is you cannot force a reroll of the ship's die with cautious security. Yes, which makes me very, very unhappy because I managed to roll three with none. <laughs> I was like, dang it! <laughs> dang it, dang it. So, but one moment when I played up, so, Kragath, I need you to roll Disruptor Damage, please. I believe the Dark Royal does, what is it, six, seven? No, uh, you do nine damage with your Disruptor Banks. Uh, they'll be fine. <laughs> they'll be fine. They're space things. That will spook oh. them, right? Yeah, they're space things. Roll nine effects. Oh, they were space things. <laughs> But now I'm not. Now I'm not the bad guy. I'm not the one who who punched the cat. I'm oh, going yeah, to spend one no threat. Reroll those zeros. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And this is where I roll all effects. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so, man. so my, Craig, I begin swearing because I told those engineers to calibrate those guns weeks ago. So Craig, we it, did. <laughs> yeah. You didn't do it well enough. So they worked great. <laughs> they didn't shoot where I sent them to shoot. Chorus is just shrinking back in her seat. That's Fifteen. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a dead thing. So you sit down oh, at the console, run. you type out the relevant commands, you press the big red button, and the disruptor fires out from the prow of the Dark Royal. And for a moment, it looks like the disruptor is just going to go right by one of the creatures. Instead. It impacts the creature head on and in a explosion, uh, much like a photon torpedo, the creature literally vaporizes in an explosion. And uh, your frog friend is now very annoyed at you. And he says, now, what did I tell you? I told you not to shoot them. And what did you do? You got and shoot them. Sir. I expect restitution. What kind of restitution? Well, do you know how long it takes me to breed another one of these things? It is uh, it is probably between 1 to 12,000 years. Well, you're not wrong, but you don't have to be an asshole about it. <laughs> <laughs> Enlighten me how long. Approximately three years. That is rather fast for a creature of this size. Well, of course, it's meant for a food distribution. Well, you got a pretty cooked one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I really had to hold myself back from saying that. Uh, I blink a few times and state, what is the restitution you are asking for? Well, ironically enough, I'm going to need some dilithium there, Sonny. Then you are in luck. Uh, our stabilization continues. It does. However, I'm going to re-increase the difficulty because now you have a you have two creatures that are attempting to get in the way of your beam because they don't know any better. I'm also going to be spending some threat to reduce the amount of work that you have done so far. So you now have only done four work, and the difficulty is still a four. Can ooh, can I try something? What would you have in mind? Uh, I asked the frogman, what is the exact frequency uses to control these creatures? Now, why would I give you that? If you just asked that before, I would have given it to you, but now that you're blowing up my food... If you do not want to have another dead one, you will give it. Presence command, difficulty of three. And if you have intimidation, that would apply. I unfortunately don't have intimidation. I have interrogation. Rip. Can I take that? 
<laughs> no, you cannot interrogate him <laughs> into giving you. May I? May I spend one momentum for this? Yeah, sure. Definitely do that. Is, are you guys okay with it? Yeah, you're the one in charge. Yeah. This is all on you. <laughs> I. Nice. Bad stuff incoming. <laughs> nice. Bad stuff incoming. I knew bad stuff was incoming. Uh, my, why are my gut feelings always correct? So uh, the frog creature says, Now listen here. I've been very patient with you. I've tried to give you the instructions that you need. However, instead of treating me with kindness, you blew up my stuff and now are threatening me. I don't like that very much. I get up from my seat. He gets up from his. I am probably very much taller than him. Right, but, you know, view screen, so relative height. I'm going to very much clearly state to him, Sir, I am no politician. I am no diplomat. I am a soldier. Well, I that much is obvious. You've dilithium. got the brain of a tin can. I have been sent to collect dilithium. Your creatures are getting in the way, and I am attempting to get them out of the way. If and you this... do not help us, then you yourself are simply putting yourself in a harm's way and putting your creatures in harm's way it's about then that you all across the ship hear thunks on the hull and uh <sighs> the view screen sort of shifts and we see sort of on the uh port side of the dark royal that the two remaining creatures have latched on with their tentacles and are just beating the hull not really doing I, I... any damage to the hull but they are beating it all the same just imagine dominus is on the the, the A, and he's just looking at sensors like, the hell are they doing? <laughs> are we too far away for the sensors to reach us? I would say <laughs> that Dominus will learn about it in due time. There's a lag, but uh, not enough where he can come and say, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's more uh, for comical effect, like, what the hell is happening? I am quite teeth grid gridded angry right now. Because he, in Kra in Krakus's mind, he is done. He is doing what he can to help this man, and this man is just being obstinate for no reason. You, he's got reasons. <laughs> I blew up one of his creatures. Yes, I am trying to save his other two. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to um, alter our deflectors to ins like yes defend but also kind of switch it to an attack of sorts to kind of shock them yeah i was thinking that just like whenever they poke us they get tased eventually they learn right. through operant conditioning that this is not something to eat tell you what we'll combine the two tasks of stabilizing the moon and uh basically shocking the creatures until they learn uh this is now going to be a difficulty of five and it's uh, going to be a still control engineering assisted by the ship's weapons and engineering. And the focuses that applied last times would apply here. Uh, I look at the frogman state. I'm going to ask you one more time to give us the codes before we start using operant conditioning to teach your creatures not to bite our ship. I told you I don't have any codes. I have a gamma beacon that they aren't responding to we may be able to create a stronger force with it. Well, you got a gamble beacon. I can tell you the frequency. Of course, do we have one? This is probably something for engineering, sir. <laughs> Open up engineering. Much. Do we have a gamma beacon? If I know whatever frequency he's using, we can adjust to counter. So create a... Instead of an attracting a hmm, interesting. I have a question for you, Matt. Good sir. Go ahead. Does your frequency attract or attempt to scare the creatures off? Well, attract, of course. Would it be problematic if we use the opposite frequency to scare them off of the ship? You know how hard it is to wrangle them to go anywhere in the first place? If you send them running. If we put it in a probe and shot it at the planet? We're not trying to get them off the planet at this point. They are gnawing on our ship. 
I don't know, but they would follow the probe. So we create a probe with the same frequency exactly. that you would send us. There is more pounding on the hull. <laughs> Have to be quick. Uh I look at the I look at the frogman and state we will create a probe with the frequency and send it towards your location. It should draw the creatures to you and get them within a more a more strengthened area. Is that acceptable? He just sort of sighs and rolls his big old bulbous eyes and says, "Very well. You may try, but I swear if you blow up another one of my creatures, we will have words." We will not be firing our weapons at them. Now see you say that. Uh, I'm sending messages down to engineering to just start getting on this as fast as possible. All right. (laughs) So engineering, this is going to be a different task. This is still going to be a difficulty of four, though. Uh, This is going to be a daring secure or daring engineering. Uh, This is going to be assisted by the ship's. Let's call it communications and engineering. And the difficulty, as I said, is a four. Same focuses as before? Yes, because you're basically trying to lure the creatures away, if I understand correctly. Correct. Um, I am going to pop a determination for every problem with solution. Okay. Um... So that'll give us two. Mm-hmm. And you said daring engineering. All right. Well, that's four successes. And the ship was. Communications and engineering. All right. So uh, you do succeed. And uh, as you rig up a probe to emit the frequency that you were given and you send it out uh, towards the frog creature's ship, uh, go ahead and roll me a challenge. Roll me actually roll me. What is this? Roll me three challenge die. All right, because you rolled an effect, the creatures dislodge themselves from your hull and begin following the probe. See, what I did is I turned it up to 11. Most dials only go to 10. I made this one to 11 on the volume. I'm going to spend two threat that the dilithium moon shakes violently and a big chunk of it comes out of its surface and begins drifting away. Do we see that in engineering? Yeah, you would see that in engineering and on the bridge. Does that have any dilithium in that chunk? I would say not to the quantities you require. Uh, It would be too easy. And just as a reminder, uh, that is your current extended task progress to to, to stabilize the moon. Um, because I have veteran, I'm going to roll a challenge dice. Oh, yeah. See so if you recover it. your uh, determination. And... You do. Very nice. Phew. I think I'll need it. So, with the creatures headed off away from your ship, what's the play here? So, we've sent the drone. Have we sent the drone out already? Which the drone probe? are you referring to? The the probe to drag the creatures away. Yeah, that that's that's what's already happening. Is the the probe is drawing the creatures away? Okay, we get back to work. Okay, we need to stabilize that moon as fast as possible. I also uh, send the frogman the coordinates of where the probe is, so that way he can get to it to wrangle his creatures. Alrighty. So, engineering. I need another control engineering assisted by the ship's weapons and engineering. 
The difficulty on this is going to be a four. All right, and I'll use that momentum as well. Well, that is uh, four successes already. I'll assist. Awesome. All right, that's five successes. I just need to see a weapons engineering from the ship. All right, ship is coming. Okay, so just the five successes. So you get the one momentum. And yeah, uh, go ahead and roll me another seven challenge dies, Azadar. Okay, so uh, that would be a grand total of five after the resistance is accounted for. So that's what you're looking at. Uh, 9 out of 12 work done on the extended task. Uh, it's a difficulty 3 now. Unless you want to spend momentum to re-roll those zeros or anything of that nature. Do you think that gives us anything extra, Domus? Um, I don't think it would. Yeah, for just two. Um... All right. So in that case, uh, your deflector goes back to the work of stabilizing the moon, and it's making very good progress. However, uh, with my last bit of threat for the evening, at least as far as I have to start with, uh, I'm going to raise the difficulty back up to a four because the lattices are beginning to buckle and really ramping up the tectonic stress. Um, so this is now a difficulty four task. Um, where it would have been a three before. But yeah, another uh, another control engineering assisted by the ship's weapons engineering. Okay, I will use the same thing as before. Use that to turn that um, momentum. Okay. I'll get the ship this time. Ranker, you're very quiet there. Oh, sorry. I was saying I would get the ship, but I don't know if y'all wanted have wanted me to get the ship. Yeah, and I'll fine. re that zero. All right, so I see three successes and, uh, <laughs> and a complication. Interesting. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh... Well, the ship still has to roll. It did. The ship it. did roll. It did. It did. Oh. I think we're gonna rock now. I told now. you guys to calibrate it. Do I told wanna, you guys to calibrate it. Do you just want to take the uh, threat on that there, Jim? No, okay. I want to take the complication. No. Can I give you two threat? Nope. <laughs> so the complication <laughs> is that uh, there's a momentary disruption in the disrupt in the uh, deflector beam. Uh, probably because someone in engineering didn't scrub the right EPS conduits. Um, there's, it's just a momentary blip, but it's enough that as the beam re-impacts the moon, the creatures which were originally going to the Gamma Beacon have stopped and are now heading towards you again. And of course, uh... Mr. Frogman is like, now what are you gone and done now? Someone forgot to scrub the correct conduit. You just seem I to have a whole it. lot of problems there, mister. Yes, we do. I haven't found all of Ensign Gek's meat stash. We used to have a Ensign Gek who would hide rotting meat in random places in the ship. The Most hell kind of ship are you running over there? Seems like a circus. <laughs> I sometimes call it that. Is he even trying to actually get these creatures away from us? I, I mean, have a he, question for you. He is, that, but they're just not responding. Like, he's doing his damnedest on his end, but they're just... Complications, man. Complications. Complications are absolutely horrendous. Um, Wait. I, I pause for a second. Hold the finger up and state. Sir, would you... If I created an opposite frequency while the probe was creating the 
If I created a, a frequency opposite of the probe, do you think the creature would begin to move back towards the probe? Maybe if you hadn't spooked them, but you've spooked them twice now. I don't want to see what happens when you spook them a third time. <laughs> Nor do I. Hmm. It is I... at this point that uh, there's another thump on the hull as the two creatures <laughs> latch on again. Uh, this time around the deflector array, which cuts off oh, the beam s- instantly as a failsafe. Son of a... And, oh dear, uh, the Dark Royal oh. is going to suffer one breach to engines. So you immediately lose some power, and uh, engines are disrupted as the creatures seem to be biting into the EPS conduits and draining power through them. Uh, how much power do we lose, Jim? Uh, you lose one, I believe. Or is it two? Let me double check. I think it's two. Uh, two, 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 two. Yes, you lose two power immediately. Roger. Um, all right. So they feed off of energy. Ooh. Now that the deflector dish is offline we make a switch to the tractor beam option yes and since they are draining power we will need to figure out a way to isolate if we Uh, Zach's going to just do power restoration okay Uh, if we actually turn the deflector disc off would that stop the energy drain uh, it would not because they are literally beak buried into your hull. I, I look at the frogman on the screen and states, this is now your problem. My problem? You're the one getting eaten. <laughs> yes. It will be a very much large problem for yourself if your beasts are killed in, in self-defense. Now, see here, mister. I've been very patient with you. I have worked I with have all your crazy schemes. You. you mute him? No, I I cut him off by saying, I have been patient with you. Ah. But while I have attempted to rectify the situation, you have simply stated that you are unable to do anything. That's not what I said. I said I was doing everything in my power. And what do you do? You blow up a creature, you spook him, you spook him again, and then you nearly blow up the dilithium moon we're both trying to get stuff from. I am trying to stabilize the dilithium moon, but your creatures are making it much harder. Well, that seems like a predicament, doesn't it? Maybe if you'd listened to me in the first place, we wouldn't be here. And what would you have suggested in the first place? I don't know. You've got a big ship there. Maybe send in some sort of a probe or, I don't know, a shuttle down. If we had sent a shuttle down, that would have meant that that the moon would have been saved. It would simply meant that we would mine it. And leave. Well, that would have been a hell of a lot better than what we're at right now. <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of have me there. Uh... Master at Arms, I think we are almost there to complete Do you... this. Do you think the ship can hold out? I have a suggestion. Yes. Polarize the hull plating, dump a bunch of power into the paneling, and let's fry them. That's if we do that, then we're going, going to have one very angry frog. Yeah? Does he have a railgun? Or you slowly is... turn up the polarization to the point they let go. So kind of just like increasing, basically increasing how how much it hurts until they let go. Right. But do you care if your beasts do you care if your beasts are somewhat hurt but alive? I'm not even gonna give give a response to that. It is not dignifiable. <laughs> <laughs> we we have two options of removing the ship. You could take the probe that we have sent and attempt to ramp up its power to to attract the creatures, or we can turn the polarization on our ship on our plating to higher and higher sets, thus forcing the creatures to let go. Well, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly, because that moon there is destabilizing very rapidly. 
And sure enough, Cross, switching... you look at the scans of the moon, it's breaking up pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I immediately motion for us to start on task number two. And I tell the frog, the frogman, do you have our probe? Begin, begin your work to try and pull your creatures off. We are working as fast as we can. All right. So, uh, let me type out the, uh, the task here. So, uh, normally, uh, that would be what you're working with, uh, difficulty of three. Uh, however, uh, because the creatures are continuously draining power, you either have the option of losing a grand total of four power per attempt, or the difficulty range will increase by two. Hmm. We can That's only attempt engineering. twice, because we have eight power right now. And I can't restore more than that unless we're bringing momentum. Now, do we only need three more work to complete? Yes, you only need to complete... Actually, you need one more... You need two more breakthroughs, so if you roll another five work or more, you complete this task. Yeah, I think we could. We can force it with... Do you guys think we can force it with two? I, I think we can. Because I just realized I have Nick in time. In a nick of time. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I realized it too late. Yeah, that would have been uh, very helpful earlier, but say the <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my complication for the day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so let's do the... Uh, power increase. All right, so let, let's be clear that what we're rolling here. Are you polarizing the hull, are you using the tractor beam, or are you using the deflector again? Uh, we're going to be using... I thought we decided on the tractor beam because the beasts have decided to take away part of our... Well, take away yeah. the beam. Yeah, I thought the deflector was out. I mean, it, it, it it's still an option. There's just a very high complication range on it. But... Um... No. Uh, if you do the tractor beam, that's going to be a control engineering, and the ship would assist you with a structure engineering. Ooh, that's a good roll for it. Yeah, it's into the tractor beam. All right. All right. So this is uh, again a uh, difficulty of five. I thought we were keeping the difficulty down to what it was, but increasing the power usage. Oh, okay, yeah. If you're using the power, right. then yeah, you would just lose the four power, and it would be difficulty three. All right, I'm going to use my determination again. Okay. Which value? Uh, every problem with solution. Uh, you got a different one? Um, patience, wait before you strike. Yeah, I like you can't that hide one. from me. I like the, I right. like the patience one. That will I will assist. Right, we're three. Yep, there's three successes. All right, that's four successes. I need to see a structure engineering from the ship. Don't roll a complication. God, tell me about <laughs> it. Anybody want to roll this? I don't know if you want me to roll it after the last two. Do it. Okay. Third time's there charm. There you go. That is five successes, which means you get two momentum. All right. For all the marbles, as it are, seven challenge die. And that is more than sufficient. So, yeah. Uh, while the creatures are nomming away at your deflector dish, uh, from one of your tractor beam emitters, uh, a bluish uh, cone comes out of it and envelops the dilithium moon. Uh, just in the nick of time, as it stabilizes the decay rate, you now can probably mine safely. You just have to deal with the creatures that are sapping your power. Uh, I look at the screen and state, we have stabilized the moon. Get your creatures off of us. Like I said, I can't control them. Or You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to lure them away. I've even got your probe at 300%. It's doing nothing. You really gone and pissed them off. I can't imagine why. <laughs> I'm going to do power restoration. Um, 
What is that again? Control engineering? Uh, it is either control or daring engineering at a difficulty of two. Are I have a small question while he's doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, these creatures are attracted to energy, correct? Possibly. So if there's no available energy, they would stop paying attention. Correct. Potentially. Okay. All right, so Zach, you get one power, and then it's one power per momentum. Well, uh, right now we're at five, so if we, we can do it in another attempt, and we'll still have power. So we could do the polarized thing, or we just start shooting them. I don't want to kill them, because that would piss off Green Boy, and that means we just pissed off another alien species. And their food may or may not be delicious. But, um... I'm trying to think, because if these creatures are attracted to energy, mm -hmm. and energy is what's spooking them, would an absence of energy cause them to stop paying attention to us? One way to find out. If we don't have, I actually energy. asked Frogman, Captain, would it be possible that if there was no energy, if the beasts could not sense any more energy in the ship? they would leave us alone. I mean, that's possible, but I think your tractor beam is the only thing keeping that moon together at the moment. This is true. Hmm. There is more pounding on the hull. I I ask if he can fly closer with the, with the beacon because there may or may not be, uh, well, there may or may not be a distance problem. Right. So he does get a little bit closer. However, you are going to suffer another breach to engines here. So you do lose two power. Yeah, we can't attempt anything. Well, you can. It's just a high difficulty. I'm just going to ask for the polarization. Shock him. Okay. We are a hornet's nest. Let's see. So I would treat this like a modulate shield, which has a power requirement of one, but we're going to... So it's only a requirement of one, but the difficulty is going to be higher. So uh, the tactical officer attempts a control security. The ship assists with structure and engineering. The difficulty on this is going to be raised from a two to a four, however. But if you succeed, you get rid of the creatures. Not like dead, but they leave you alone kind of a thing. Yes. that That's why I'm doing this, just so I can tell the frogman we tried everything in our arsenal to get them to let go. It is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So you guys want to do it? Well, go I, for think, it. I think sure. you have the higher security. Yeah, okay, so it will be one security again? Uh, it'll be control and security. Control security. Can I grab up a additional dice? You guys fine with that? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the ship was structure security? Structure engineering. Engineering. Got it. Ooh. Three successes already. Very nice roll. And you guys mind if I just reroll that zero? Sure. Four successes already. Let's see if I can get. Actually, should I not? Should I not risk the uh, dice god's wrath? Yeah, you actually want to reroll it. Well, I, uh, complication. Right now yeah. we've met the task. I say don't tempt fate. Yeah, that's let's not tempt fate. Fair. I can choose not to reroll it. Correct. So I'm gonna just let it lie. Okay. <laughs> So you slowly ramp up the power on the uh, polarized hull, and eventually the space squids do eventually unhinge themselves from your deflector dish and begin drifting back towards the moon. And uh, Frogman says, Now see, was that so hard? <laughs> I'm going to take a deep breath to not yell at Because is that was that to stabilize the moon while eating into our ship, and we had to shock them off our ship is the worst possible response he could have had towards me. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my tongue as being a being tactical as part of being a warrior and simply motion for Koras to start the mining pursuit. All right. So, because you're already using the tractor beam, it's very simple. You literally just sort of draw up parts of the moon in controlled fashion. Um, as that's happening, though, uh, Frogman says, Now, uh, based on the damages you've done to me so far, I think I'm going to need this amount of dilithium. And Karas, the number he sends you, you either have to, in order to meet your quota... You either have to give a portion of the Dark Royals, and well, let me let me rephrase this. So, let's say for example, there's ten dilithium units on the moon. The guy wants six, but you also want six. The yeah. Dark Royal has four units. So, if you were to mine the moon completely and give two units from the Dark Royal to Dark Royal A you could potentially work this out just fine, but you would need to go to a star base to refuel very quickly. I, ah, uh, this, is, this is actually rather annoying me because he didn't really do much to help us at all. He says he was help, trying to help us, but it was all on us to get those beasts to try and get off of us and such like that. And so I would not... say his ship is only a little scale two thing. If you really wanted to, you could just tell him to go f himself. We could charge right, him. Look at her. Uh, I I am actually I'm going to respond the other with way. that with good sir. We were damaged by your creatures. I believe reparations are in order. I've already calculated that. You're lucky I'm not asking for the full moon. I actually asked Chorus to run the numbers how much it would cost for a repair of what his beast destroyed and how much energy it took. All and how right. we calculate that? He doesn't know how much damage was done to the ship. So, Chorus, you can make up a number for comedic effect. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it feels like it's a lot. <laughs> By number, is this like ten, like tens of thousands of uh, money, or like that he's talking? Uh, to put it bluntly, uh, dilithium is one of those much-needed commodities that we never figure out how they "quote unquote" pay for it. Uh, but if I had to put a price on it in latinum, somewhere in the hundred to two hundred bar range. Which is quite a large sum. Well, it looks like we're in a conundrum because... Uh, it doesn't look like a win-win situation for either of It's a win-lose. Might I suggest a little compromise? He can scavenge the meat from the beast that was killed. The damages to the ship and whatever he can salvage would make him only get four units of dilithium and we get our six. So as a reminder, the creature didn't just die, it exploded. It takes time to collect the meat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it's already frozen in space, right? No preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cragith, if you want to propose this. Um, I actually... I actually will. And I do kind of crack my knuckles as in I'm not going to be... I'm not really budging on this. Because I have the biggest gun. Okay. Uh, roll me a presence command difficulty of three. Presence command difficulty of three. Uh, can I grab how much? Are you guys okay with me spending the last of our momentum? Sure. 
because I don't think I'm going to make it any other way. And I'm probably not going to make it, but at the very least, I'm making a try. I don't have a focus for this because I don't have Intimidate. I forgot to pick that up. Ooh! Four successes. So, uh, Frogman says, Very well, I know when uh, I'm being strong-armed. Sure, you can take uh, six units. I'll take my four. But just know that uh, I'm going to complain to your superior, mister. I don't know who they are, but I'm going to find out. You are welcome to try. And he shuts off comms. And the space squids, uh, he finally has control over them again. The space squids sort of go to his little ship. And then he leads them out of the sector. After, of course, getting his dilithium. But uh, we're just going to fast forward a little bit here. You guys have acquired the dilithium. Um, and it's in your cargo bays. You just have to deliver it back to the Dark Royal A. I ordered us to beeline back to the ship in case he has some friends. We'll be beeline back to the Dark Royal A because I expect him to have friends. And I don't want to be around for them. All right. So, uh, about half a day passes. Does anyone have anything they'd wish to accomplish during this half-day time transit? I do know that I want to do something as Dominus back on the planet. Oh, I definitely will have a scene then. So what would you like to do as Dominus? Uh, he wants to talk more with the uh, nanites. Okay. The entities. Anything in particular you're discussing? Uh, just getting set up, you know, like trying to like negotiate things with them he is still interested on trying to have some of them come back so they could have an, a demon class plan within cornet space where they can continue to do work okay let's say for sake of argument that conversation goes well all right um uh, but uh unless anyone has anything else um it says there will be working on repairs of the ship from the space squids. And I will be writing a full report on the, on the frogman, the space squids, and why we should shoot the space squids. And... <laughs> <laughs> of course, we'll be writing a small report uh, encompassing the events from last go-around with the nanites, and um, just now to... <laughs> alert and be like hey so we had a run in with these creatures mm -hmm. <laughs> FYI so nice alright then we will skip ahead just a little bit where Dominus uh, you are meeting in the war room of the Dark Royal with uh, Krageth to discuss what just happened because I think that's a scene that needs to happen <sighs> you, I I have given Dominus my report. I look absolutely tired. Captain Dominus. Mm. I never want to see those squids again. I see. I attempted all diplomatic attempts I could... And the man was completely incompetent. Did you did you really attempt everything? Everything within my power. Well, let me show you what you did wrong here. You approached this moon and scanned the only visible life form. You did not do a detailed scan of the area. You should Correct. have picked up that ship and then made contact. Understood, sir. I plan to have you in command every now and then. And I want you to take these opportunities to grow and learn. This was a rough test, apparently. Indeed. I was trained as a soldier, not as a captain. Well, soldiers also supposed to lead at times of need. So you're gonna... Enjoy some educational reading. Other than that, good job on getting the lithium. But I, apolo I apologize for the damage on the ship. Yeah, I should so have taken the shot first. 
try not to just jump into a firefight. We have a science officer. Use her. You say Understood. that you are just a soldier? Well, I want you to be more than that. Understood? Understood, sir. Very well. This best. I begin walking away before uh, stopping and turn back on him and stating, If I ever see those squids again, I will I will die a happy cornate. And it's right about that. And walk away. Yeah, as uh, <laughs> Kragus steps out, the Dominus, you're getting a hail from Cerberus Station. Oh, hit the console. And uh, the voice of one Lieutenant Dusk appears, or not appears, uh, comes over the comm and Dusk says, uh, Captain Dominus, we understand that we will be expecting you within several days' time. Is that still the timetable? It looks like it. Yes, it is. And will we be accepting the Ophion A as well? I'll be bringing her. Very good. Then I've been asked to pass on a message. Uh, something about bring some food? I don't really know what it means, but that's the message I was asked to pass on. Do you intend to eat the crew? No, I think there's maybe some sort of a dinner with all the captains. Oh, for Okay. Yeah, I'll bring something. Very good. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back at the station. Cerberus out. Have a good one. And uh, yeah. Hiv to the war room. Sure enough, uh, after a few moments, uh, Hiv steps in and says, You wish to be speaking with me, sir. Uh, apparently I need to bring some food for Cerberus. Find the most disgusting, vile thing we have aboard of the ship. I could get some of meat that we are still pulling from Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's use that. Very good, sir. Should we um, perhaps expose it to very high-intensity plasma? <sighs> Apparently the captains want to play nice. And uh, they're going to have some meals. I also don't know what they think that uh, the Cornets have on our ship that would be a delicacy. Most but we do have good eat. liquor. Yeah, you know what we do? Bring some of the oldest bottles we got. How do you should, sir? Well, they're playing nice. I might as well play nice, too. Plus, I want to see how weak they are. Synthol is uh, apparently their craze. We're going to give them the real thing. Yes, um, I think they will be finding that our liquor is much more potent than their puny little synthol. We literally have one that translates into rot gut. That we do, sir. That we do. Uh, I'm going to do the rounds and see how everyone's doing after this mission. Um... Get the senior staff aboard the Dark Royal A after, though. This ship's a little bit beat up, and with the entities down below, they've offered to do repairs. Very good, sir. Yeah, he'll, uh... He'll go find Chorus. Okay. Let's, uh... I don't know, where would Chorus be hiding this time of day? <laughs> Probably the lab. <laughs> <laughs> her office. So, uh, Karas, you're in the science bay when there's a chime at the door behind you. Come on in! And then step to Dominus. Science hello, officer? Cap yes, sir? Just saying hello. Well, uh, hello. <laughs> How can I help you? Uh, we're going to be heading back to Cerberus Station here. Once the, uh, the lithium's aboard the Dark Royal A. The, yes. uh, the Federation crew are anxious for one. They've been a handful, to say the least. Keep wanting to have the control of the ship back to them, but I have 
told them numerous times that that would happen once we're at Cerberus, simply because they are out of date. They need time to acclimate. I figured uh, I'd like to have you transfer over there just for a short time while we take the ship back and talk with them. Seeing a friendly bullion face is a lot better than seeing mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, not <laughs> She's going to just stare. <laughs> Smile, of course. I, I don't mind doing that, sir, but you can shift into a Boolean form, can you not? If you will. He'll just smile and he'll shift into Koras. He'll be like, do you want me to look like you? That would be jarring, oh, this is, sir. <laughs> this uniform is rather nice. Hmm. Thank you. I, I find it to be rather comfortable. It is a nice shade of blue. <laughs> as long as it doesn't blend in with my skin. And he'll shift back. Yeah. And I also found that people don't like me pretending to be them, so... I can do as you ask, sir. And yep. hopefully the tensions won't be so high by the time we arrive. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we're going to be transferring some of the senior staff over to the Dark Rill on a trip back, as the secondary crew will stay down with the ship as it gets repaired. Yes, sir. Is there anything else that I can do to help with either? I would like a report on your evaluation of Kragath while he was in command. Right now? Uh, get it to me by 0700 tomorrow. Yes, sir. Excellent. I will around. say, just before you leave, he did very well in keeping his patience for as long as... That's all impressive, but the ship was damaged. Yes, sir, it was. After I told him not to get it injured. Mm. I look forward to the report, as you were. Yes, sir. And then I'm going to head down to see Zaz. All right. Give me a moment here. Little twenty's fighting me. <laughs> here we go. There's engineering. Yeah, Polek, uh, Zek is not there, but Dominus, you are. And Zaz is just coming out of a uh, Jeffrey's tube, holding uh, another bit of rotted meat. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to hold this one for my own personal stash. Oh. Wonderful. Anyways, I have come to inform you that uh, you'll be transferring to the Dark Royal A in a few hours' time. The Dark Royal currently will be descending planet side for repairs. I go where you wish, but I've done something to offend? No, no, we're taking the Dark Royal A back to Cerberus, while the Dark Royal will get repaired by the entity below. They are bored, and they haven't had anything to repair in a long time, so I figured let them have a crack at the Cornet vessel. And also, while we're on our trip back, since it will take a few days... Feel free to explore every inch of that <sighs> Prometheus class. Thank you, sir. And the smile. That shark grin comes up. Particularly, I want information on what they call MVAM. The multi-vector mode where they break off? Yes. It's been around for some time, but I'm curious of how they've achieved this to be so seamless when other vessels seem to have issues with it. 
Hmm. I'll get on that. This is my first priority, sir. Excellent. And I would like a report from you about Kragos' performance and of uh, command. Uh, have it on my desk ready by 0700 tomorrow. Yes, sir. As you were. And he goes back to the meat. <laughs> Picks it up, snatches it, throws it in the air, and catches it. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll go to the bridge and start issuing out um, the commands for the senior crew once it's time for them to depart to the Dark Girl A. And I'll be leaving the support team characters to be in charge of the ship while it's being repaired. Okay. All right. Well, uh, with all affairs taken care of, let's go ahead and call the session there because we do have to discuss some things offline. Um, so Twitch, YouTube, this is where I'm going to cut the stream. Uh, if you want to see the crossover with these guys, it is this coming Friday at 9 p.m. on McCall's channel. Uh, it will also be on my YouTube uh, after the fact. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in, and you'll see these guys later. Bye, stream. <laughs>